Students from the Indigenous Australian culture who experience disadvantage in their youth present various issues in the classroom, such as social, academic and emotional issues. One of the main issues that these students experience is the gap in educational outcomes. This issue can vary between students, which makes it important to generalise and variate strategies that will allow Indigenous Australian students from disadvantaged backgrounds to achieve their very best. Education in the Indigenous culture is perceived differently in various locations. There are Indigenous students all over Australia who attend schools in remote, rural and metropolitan areas. This means that access to facilities can vary depending on location. However, regardless of location, Indigenous Australian students across all areas of Australia can experience more disadvantages compared to the non-Indigenous population. These disadvantages include cultural differences, low family income, educational achievement gaps and health inequality. All of these disadvantages can severely affect young students and how they learn, which results in these students requiring additional education needs at school. The differentiation of educational outcomes between Indigenous Australian students and non-Indigenous Australian students has continued to remain as a significant issue in local schools and the Australian education system. The Australian Institute of Health and Welfare suggests that education has long been considered a critical factor towards closing the gap in Indigenous educational outcomes. However, the lack of ongoing support towards Indigenous Australian students is compelling them to perform well below curriculum standards compared to the non-Indigenous student population. Back in 2008, the Australian Government committed to confronting the issue of Indigenous disadvantage in Australia, suggesting the considerable gap between the educational outcomes for Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australian students could be closed. However, research conducted by the Telethon Kids Institute suggests that measures of school academic performance have consistently indicated that Indigenous Australian students have lower levels of achievement than non-Indigenous Australian students. Helm and Lamb support this, with the statistical representation of a decline of more than one quarter over the last 15 years in the gap in retention rates between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students. And the gap is ex expected to remain at 41.5% compared with 72.1% for males and 49.5% compared with 82.7% for females. This statistical representation compares the difference in educational achievement outcomes between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australian students and further indicates the gap constantly expanding for those Indigenous Australian students continuing to struggle with their education. The issue of the gap in educational outcomes emerged from the continuous disadvantage in the Indigenous culture, with the addition of unequal opportunities arising from this disadvantage. These unequal opportunities include experiencing social disadvantage, low parental income and experiencing cultural differences in the society. Purdy and Buckley propose that the lack of recognition by schools of Indigenous culture and history, the failure to fully engage parents and the community, and the ongoing disadvantage in many areas of the daily lives of Indigenous Australians has continued to act as a consequence in regards to educational outcomes for Indigenous Australian students. The issue of gaps in educational achievement can impact on students' educational experience in various ways, including decreased social interaction, restricted interest or disengagement, and low school attendance. The issue of differentiated educational outcomes may impact Indigenous Australian students' social interaction in the classroom. This can include interacting with the teacher and other students. Increased social interaction can occur from students feeling as though they are not worthy to communicate with other students who are higher achievers, and sometimes even the teacher. Underachieving in school may furthermore reduce the individual's self-esteem and may impact on the way that they interact with others. For example, a student who is achieving lower grades than another student may feel awkward, scared, embarrassed, and even shy to interact with students who are achieving higher grades. This may cause further deterioration in educational outcomes as these students may be too afraid to consult the teacher for extra assistance if they need it. Furthermore, the interaction between these students as parents may also decrease. According to the Telethon Kids Institute, anecdotal evidence from schools suggests that the involvement of Indigenous Australian parents in their child's education is shaped by their own experience at school. For example, parents who have had a poor educational experience are generally less likely to get involved in their child's education. This makes it significantly difficult for students to interact with their parents in order to improve their desired educational outcome. The issue of gaps in educational outcomes can also impact Indigenous Australian students' engagement at school. The Australian Institute of Health and Welfare assert that the continuous issue of gaps in achievement can act as a barrier to learning. Here, students may become disengaged, resulting in poor student academic performance or even avoiding school. For example, a student who is performing well below the average standard at a certain year level may become disengaged in class, which can result in even more decreased educational outcomes. For students who experience lower educational outcomes in their studies, it can be hard for them to feel the need to attend school. For example, a student who has noted that there is a distinct difference in their educational achievement outcomes compared to other students may avoid school as they may feel as though they cannot achieve a high standard like their student colleagues. The Australian Government emphasised the legislative requirements for students with additional education needs such as Indigenous Australian students who experience disadvantage. These legislative requirements highlight that schools have an obligation to ensure that students with additional education needs can participate in school programs where they can develop their skills, knowledge and understanding. These requirements are also mandatory under the Education and Training Reform Act 2006, 
the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Education Policy and the UN Declaration of Rights of the Indigenous Peoples. These requirements can also be declared as various implications for policy that can be considered in addressing the issue. The first policy implication is from the Education and Training Reform Act 2006. The Act states that teachers must make, approve or grant special arrangements for students with additional education needs in consequence of chronic illness, impairment or personal circumstances for the conduct of assessments and examinations, including the modification of the requirements and rules for the conduct of assessments and examinations. This policy implication is suggesting that the educational achievement outcomes for Indigenous Australian students with personal circumstances can be improved through the modification of assessments in the classroom. By modifying the assessment type, students can demonstrate their abilities through their preferred learning style. This could significantly close the gap in educational achievement outcomes for Indigenous Australian students. The second policy implication is the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Education Policy 1989. The policy provides long-term goals and strategies that can meet the education needs of Indigenous Australian students. Article 19 in the policy states that to achieve equitable and appropriate educational outcomes for Indigenous Australian students, the education system must enable Indigenous Australians' attainment of skills to the same standard as other Australian students throughout the compulsory schooling years and to provide community education services which enable Indigenous Australians to further develop their skills. This policy implication is suggesting its aim to improve the effectiveness of educational services for Indigenous Australians in regards to achieving equitable and satisfactory educational outcomes for Indigenous Australian students. The third policy implication is the Closing the Gap campaign. This campaign is a long-term framework run by the Australian Government that focuses on closing the substantial gap in educational outcomes between Indigenous Australian students and non-Indigenous Australian students. The targets for the Closing Ca the Gap campaign include closing the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous school attendance by 2018 and halving the gap for Indigenous Australian students in literacy and numeracy achievements by 2018. The campaign involves implementing various strategies that will enable this significant gap to close. The funding from the Closing the Gap campaign is subdivided into different strategies and is spent on the requirements listed under each strategy. The Australian Government outlines these strategies which include the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander strategy which includes working towards a better understanding of the complex factors influencing school attendance. The Indigenous Advancement Strategy Children and Schooling Program which funds $222.3 million to support mentoring activities, full-time school-based academies to improve student engagement and scholarships and apprenticeships. The third strategy is the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Education Strategy which includes $11.6 million over three years from 2014 onwards to schools for the additional costs associated with accommodation and educating Indigenous students and $22 million over four years from 2013 to 2017 to address the disparity in literacy and numeracy outcomes. This strategy also includes $4 million in funding over four years from 2014 to 2018 to the Australian Research Alliance for Children and Youth to undertake research and develop resources to help their parents better engage in their child's education. Due to these new policies, my teaching practices will change in the way that assessments and classroom activities are delivered in order to promote attendance, parent involvement, achievement, participation and engagement in the classroom. This will include the modification of assessment tasks, classroom activities, the way that content is produced, the content itself and increasing my knowledge on the factors which may be influencing the gap in educational outcomes between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students. This will reflect upon differentiated instruction. Differentiated instruction is split into three domains including content, process and assessment. The delivery of content needs to reflect upon a culturally responsive curriculum. For example, the curriculum content must be variated to utilise Indigenous culture, histories and knowledge. This means that I will incorporate Indigenous artefacts into the classroom. These artefacts will include the use of Indigenous art, the use of Indigenous tools such as boomerangs and Native Australian animal templates. Having community connections, including local Indigenous partnerships, campaigns and programs, can also be effective when modifying the curriculum content. The funding from the Closing the Gap campaign will be significantly beneficial towards Indigenous students as these students will have the opportunity to participate in mentoring activities and make the use of particular facilities and materials that will support their learning and attendance rates. This funding will also be highly beneficial for the implication on the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Education Policy as students will have the opportunity to gain skills from community educational services with the money and mentoring provided to schools. Modifying the way that curriculum content is delivered also needs to be variated. It is most effective to modify the delivery of content according to students' learning styles. These learning styles include kinesthetic, auditory and visual. For kinesthetic learners, cultural artefacts, role plays, dances and stories can be used to, as a mode of delivery. For visual learners, Indigenous books, photos, videos and documentaries can be used. For auditory learners, Indigenous storytelling, audiobooks and music can be used to deliver content. Modifying lessons to suit 
these students' preferred needs and learning styles is a crucial factor towards addressing the issue and improving the educational outcomes. If students are learning through their preferred learning style, they are more likely to gain knowledge from the content they are learning. Differentiating the way that students are assessed on their learning is also an important factor towards improving the educational outcomes for Indigenous Australian students. The two forms of assessment include the traditional way of assessment, which is summative assessment, and the untraditional way of assessment, which is formative assessment. Summative assessment is used in the mode of an exam, test, performance and essay. These modes of assessment are the typical forms that are used in the mainstream classroom. To differentiate assessment to best suit Indigenous students' needs, it is important to have different modes of form formative assessment including role plays, think pair share activities, graphic organisers, portfolios and exit slips. This is important for Indigenous Australian students as according to Perso and Haywood, these students learn and are assessed best through indirect formats. As teachers, it is our responsibility to abide by these policy and pedagogical implications in order to assist in addressing the issue. These changes are supported by the Universal Design for Learning, also known as the UDL. The idea of the Universal Design for Learning is that facilities, instruction and curriculum content is universally accessible for all students and discrimination is reduced while participation and achievement in the classroom is enhanced. This design is flexible and is constructed so it works with students from varying abilities. The three main UDL principles that form and emphasise are one, representing classroom materials in various ways two, expressing content in diverse ways in the classroom, and three, flexible methods and strategies for assessment tasks. These principles are extremely beneficial towards modifying content, process and assessment as they facilitate for curricular modifications. This means that the gap in educational achievement outcomes between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australian students can improve significantly through the use of the UDL for curriculum content, pro process and assessment modification. As a teacher in preparation, I have adopted various teaching strategies that can support Indigenous Australian students in the classroom who are experiencing the issue of significant gaps in educational outcomes. When designing lessons and strategies to suit these students' preferred learning styles and needs, it is important that I use a personalised learning approach which adjusts and adapts to the learner's needs in in addition to adjusting the pace of instruction. The first strategy that I have adopted is to acknowledge and elaborate on students' prior knowledge and experiences and local Indigenous cultures and histories. For example, I can differentiate and localise the curriculum to best suit these students' needs by inviting elders to visit and share their knowledge of local Indigenous stories and cultures in addition to partnering with local Indigenous communities. This can be adopted into any curriculum area. For example, students in a maths class may learn addition more thoroughly through the use of counting dots on a native Australian animal. This strategy will be significantly effective as it will develop on Indigenous perspectives in all classroom activities making Indigenous Australian students feel more welcomed and supported through their disadvantage at school. This strategy will therefore contribute to the solution of the issue as it will not require students to learn new concepts from the beginning but instead will allow students to learn through their prior knowledge which will also allow them to gain a stronger understanding of the concepts they are learning. The second strategy that I have adopted is to construct a Koori Education Learning Plan also known as a KELP for each Indigenous Australian student. The Koori Education Learning Plan precisely states that the learner is at the centre supported by a family and school engagement, the online learning plan and the student voice. This plan is designed to assist Indigenous Australian students and their families and enables myself as a teacher to construct further strategies that will allow optimal engagement and participation of the student. Having a Koori Education Learning Plan will limit the gap in educational achievement outcomes as it will have personalised strategies and learning goals that will assist each Indigenous Australian student in their education. These learning goals will set a target for each student's educational progress which will slowly contribute to the solution of closing the gap in Indigenous educational achievement gaps. The third strategy that I have adopted is to create implications of high expectations for pedagogy in the classroom. This means that I can prove and demonstrate to students the belief that I have high expectations for them and prove that I know that they can achieve their very best. For example, I can demonstrate this belief to students by frequently telling students that they can learn what I am teaching them and that I expect them to learn the concepts that I teach them, encouraging each student with their learning, not shaming students but instead making suggestions on how they can improve their work, guiding students through their work but not giving them the answers, and demonstrating that I have high expectations in the examples that I provide students with and in the materials that I provide for each student. The fourth strategy that I have adopted is to address students' preferred learning styles. These learning styles include kinesthetic, visual and auditory. For kinesthetic learners, lessons can be based around cultural dances, cultural artefacts, local indigenous role plays and stories and experiments. For visual learners, lessons can be taught through cultural videos, cultural books, photos, diagrams and posters. For auditory learners, lessons can be taught through indigenous music, songwriting and songs, indigenous storytelling, podcasts and audiobooks. This strategy will contribute to the solution of the issue as students will be able to improve their academic performance by acquiring knowledge through their preferred learning style. By doing this, students will be able to learn the required concepts in a learning style that best suits them, which will slowly close a significant gap in educational achievement outcomes. The fifth strategy that I have adopted is to variate assessment procedures. Instead of measuring achievement through exams and tests, students can be assessed through informal assessment procedures, which can allow myself as a teacher to modify classroom activities to improve student outcomes. Different assessment types can be using concept maps, using six-sided dice questions, getting students to create songs, role plays and dances, and getting students to create diagrams and posters. 
For example, the six-sided dice can be used to assess student learning by asking students different questions. These questions can include, what did we do in class today? Why did we do it? What did I learn? What did I enjoy? What am I still confused about? And what do I want to remember from today's lesson? These questions will allow myself as a teacher to understand what students have learned and what they haven't learned, which will allow me to plan and modify lessons for the future. This assessment procedure will also allow students to reinforce what they have learned and what they think they need to improve on. Classdojo is an online website and application that links teachers with parents and students to construct positive relationships and allows effective communication. The application is designed to communicate with parents and students about their daily, weekly or monthly progress at school. Classdojo encourages students by rewarding points, known as Dojo points, and allows students to share their learning experiences by posting photos, videos and general information on their Dojo portfolio. Access to this application at school and at home will be significantly beneficial for students as they will be encouraged to demonstrate and share their learning in the classroom and communicate effectively by being rewarded dojo points. The application will also be extremely beneficial for parents as a teacher can communicate frequently with the parents about their child's educational progress. This will allow the parents to become more active in their child's education.